Hi, are you struggling with your DMP practice project idea? Do you not know where to begin? Well, then this video is for you, so stay tuned. Let's begin. So your DMP project, remember, that's an umbrella term used to describe a scholarly project with the express purpose of translating evidence into practice, right? So you may be you may hear it referred to as the final project or your research DMP project. Um, but basically, it's going to reflect your area of practice, your specialty area, your area of interest, and allow you to deep dive into the research um, and create a project focused on your clinical sp specialty, your clinical practice. So you will use your DMP project to demonstrate mastery of your advanced nursing specialty. So because uh, the there's so much information regarding clinical nursing practice, your choices for a DMP topic are basically limitless. Um, so you, depending on your school and, and the requirements for your individual program, you may um, explore the impact of nursing outcomes on nursing practice. You may be looking at a practice change initiative. Um, you may be looking at a quality improvement project or even evaluation of a new practice model. So it's all gonna depend on your specific program and what the specifics they're looking for. So bottom line is, regardless of your program, all DMP projects have three things in common. And according to the American Association of Colleges of Nursing Essentials, the DMP Essentials that they've laid out, a DMP project should be able to successfully integrate some or all of the following into practice, things like Focus on a change that impacts healthcare outcomes, either through direct or indirect care. Have a systems, meaning a micro, a meso, or a macro level approach of a population or aggregate of focus. Implement the appropriate area practice. Include a plan for sustainability, so financial systems or political realities. And, and or include an evaluation of processes and or outcomes. So all projects should be designed so that processes and outcomes can be evaluated to guide, to guide practice and policy. And all should have a foundation for future practice scholarship. All right, so some, like I said, the ideas are limitless, but it all depends um, on your need of your organization. And if you watched my other video, which I'm gonna link right here, um, talking about what to expect in DMP school, you're gonna see that um, the ideas are limitless. And I also went over what a PICO is and how to define your PICO, but maybe you're not even there yet. So I did talk about in that video about conducting a needs assessment at your organization. And you may determine some examples of practice projects might include a medication safety education program to reduce the risk of harm caused by medication errors, or you may um, be uh, looking at an evaluation of school-based asthma protocol. Um, another example could be development of an evidence-based inpatient alcohol detoxification guideline for culturally diverse adults. Um, maybe a fall prevention um, in a med surge setting. Uh, maybe implementing a screening, brief intervention, and referral to treatment approach among patients with chronic opioid therapy. Um, Improving nurse proficiency and quantitative blood loss measurement. Uh, for our educators out there, so if you're going for a DMP with a, uh, an educator focus, uh, maybe predictors of first year new nursing students at risk for early departure. Maybe you could talk about something of, of attrition. Implementation and evaluation of a commercially prepared clinical simulation scenario in a community college associate degree nursing program. So all of these are, are, are ideas that you can um, consider, depending on what your needs are. I highly recommend, not only do you do a needs assessment, but, but figure out what you are most passionate about, because there's nothing worse than trying to work through a quality improvement project or work through a practice change about something that just doesn't get you excited and doesn't get you up in the morning, right? So this is, you're going to be involved with this practice project for a long time. So you really want to do something that you're excited and passionate about um, if you can. So um, like I mentioned in my last video, I did talk about PICO. I broke down the PICO uh, format, the PICO question. Um, so an example of a PICO question might be, 
Um, in the adult patient diagnosed with heart failure, remote monitoring of heart failure patients by nurses compared to providing written discharge education of heart failure patients by nurses will reduce their 30-day hospitalization readmission rate. Um, maybe for adolescents with type 2 diabetes, does the use of telehealth consultation compared to in-person consultations include blood sugar control? I also mentioned my, my personal project, which I was very passionate about, and it was about um, healthcare providers, especially nurses, but I didn't just limit to nurses. I, I included all healthcare providers at the facility I was implementing at. Does the implementation of a mindfulness-based stress reduction program compared to current practice impact compassion fatigue among healthcare providers? So um, with that, you have to have, so with all of these, you have to have some type of a, a tool that you're gonna measure pre and post implementation. So the, the intervention is whatever you want them to do, right? So whatever you want your population to do, that's your, your implementation, that, that's your protocol, okay? Um, National Guidelines Clearinghouse has a, a, a great resource, is a great resource for maybe finding protocol that you want to implement into your practice. So with, uh, with mine, it was in a mindfulness-based stress reduction program. There are several out there um, if you do a search. And what I did was I, ha I, I found a, a reliable, reputable tool that is also out there. There's several that, that are out there in, in current practice. Um, I I specifically chose the professional quality of life tool, but there's also, because I wanted to measure compassion fatigue and compassion satisfaction, but there's also the Maslach burnout inventory, the Oldenburg burnout inventory. There's so many reliable tools. And, and it, so if you wanted to study burnout instead of compassion fatigue, you can do that too. And what these tools do is you're going to give... The, the tool to your population of interest, and mine was healthcare providers, I gave them the tool initially, they, they filled out, it was a, basically a survey, they filled it out, and um, it, it was a survey based on a Likert scale, and then I, I got results from that. Then we went through the mindfulness-based stress reduction program, right? So it's an eight-week program, we went through it together. Um, they implemented on um, their own time. It was a personal program, so it it, it it was for the nurses, not necessarily for the patients they were um, serving. So it was for the nurses. They were to do certain things every week for eight weeks, and then at the end of it, we would debrief, and they would fill out the same exact tool again, and then I'm going to compare before intervention, the, the survey before they, they did the program, and the survey after, and I wanted to see if it impacted compassion fatigue. Um so with all that to be said, I, I, you don't even know where to begin. Where do I begin? Oh my goodness. So if we go into any search engine, preferably your school is going to have the best um, resource. So your school library is going to be a place to go. Um, you can also use Google Scholar. That's, that's also um, a search engine that you can use, I, but I highly recommend your school library because it, it, it's going to be more focused and it's going to give you better search results. If you go into Google Scholar, you have, you know, your search bar and you're going to use what's called Boolean search operators. So these are words like and, or, and not. So if you have a, a general idea of what you want to to practice, what, what your project is about, you can always go in there and put, and I'm going to put an example here, uh, using those Boolean search operators in your Google search or in your library search, right? So for example, I have here mindfulness and compassion fatigue, because those are the two things really I'm looking for. And I want my search results from the literature. I want them to come back with just this information. So these keywords is what I'm looking for. And then I put or burnout because sometimes, you know, Burnout and compassion fatigue are very similar, very close. So um, I wanted to see what other search results came back from that. Um, and then I want to, and then I put and nursing, right? So uh, mindfulness and compassion fatigue or burnout. So either search results, they can come back with just compassion fatigue in the article or burnout in the article or both. Um, and nursing because I, at first I was I was focused on nurses and and nursing. You can also put in there or nurses instead of nursing. So these, you wanna use these search operators because if you just put compassion fatigue into any search engine, you're gonna come out with so many, I mean, there's gonna be so many results, it's gonna be almost impossible to go through. I specifically, my focus was on healthcare providers. So when I saw that it was nurses, 
I, I maybe might want to, if I didn't get enough search results, I wanted to expand my search a little bit more and I put healthcare providers so that I can get different, uh, different healthcare specialties. Um, maybe it was, you know, physical therapists or occupational therapists and whatnot. Um, if, and then also in Google Scholar, you have that column on um, the left and you can, you can put in specifics as far as um, maybe a date range that you, you know, you don't want your, your data to be, your, your articles to be too old, right? So usually five years is a good, a good range within the last five years. If you go into your school library, you're probably going to have a little bit of an easier time maneuvering all the different, um, all the different little selections in your search. So here I'm going to show you in uh, my school library, you can put in, um, I put in compassion fatigue, which is my primary source, primary search topic. Then you can see there on the left, you, there's a drop down box where you can add those Boolean search operator terms. So you can add and or, um, or not. If you wanted to exclude something and you really didn't want to know about um, you know, pharmacists, and we can exclude them. Not that there's anything wrong with pharmacists. Nurses love pharmacists, but for our purposes here, we maybe we just wanted to focus on nursing. Um, oh, so use use those Boolean search terms, just like you see here. There's also more to get a more advanced search. You can, um, you know, select your date range. Um, maybe you only want it in English, or maybe you're okay with uh, looking at, you know, an uh, article written in a different country in a different language and then have it translated for you. So use your search options to find, um, to find, to find evidence, to find stuff that's already out there. Remember DMP project, we're not inventing anything new. We are taking what's in the literature and making it, uh, implementing it. So do a search. Now, here's a pro tip for those that stayed till the end. Here's a pro tip. If you're still lost, still stuck, have no idea, like, uh, look, I, I don't know where I'm going with this. Well, here is a pro tip. So you can search in any search engine um, your topic and then add that Boolean, Boolean search operator term of and DNP. So yeah, I can put in there um, compassion fatigue and DMP, or even just put compassion fatigue DMP in a Google search engine, and you're going to find a bunch of a, a bunch of things pop up. Now, um, a lot of schools have a repository for student papers, so you can see um, what other students have done. Now, by no means am I saying you need to do exactly what is there and exactly what you find, but if you're just so stuck and you don't know where to go, do this search, add, add a topic of interest with DMP at the end and see what other students have done. Maybe that'll give you some ideas. It'll jog, you know, some great ideas in your mind. And maybe you can be like, oh, I can take that as a starting point and I'm going to tweak it. I'm going to do this instead. Or you can see if you're stuck on what tool to use, maybe see what tools other students used in their projects. And then you can say, you can research to see if that tool will work for you. Um, or intervention, maybe see what other people did when it comes to heart failure, when it comes to medication reconciliation, or when it comes to asthma protocols, see what other students did. And then you can um, maybe tweak it to your purposes, to your school requirements and, um, there you go. So I wish you guys the best of luck. I know you can do this. It is a great experience. And um, I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.